Okay, this is the explanation of Conway's game of life as implemented in K KV or Kivi. Um, I have a Python file and I have a KV file and this is the most basic starting point and I'm going to build on that and show you how to come to build the, the entire Conway. It's for a very small grid. Um, if you haven't heard of Conway's Game of Life, I'll put a link in the comments, but it, you can just Google it. It's um, a mathematical simulation that's got a really limited set of rules and can do some really interesting things. And it's it's a really nice way to get used to manipulating canvas objects in Kiwi. Okay, so this is my starting point uh, file. I have a very basic KV file. It has a layout. Um, I'll skip that line for a second. Uh, the layout has a horizontal orientation. Um, it has inside it a defined object called my widget. Um, and here it's got an ID of widget, and up here I reference that as my widget, which is why I skipped over it. Um, it has a size, and it has, uh, I've overridden the size hint so that it's uh, the actual size. That's what that means. Um, inside uh, the layout also is a, another box layout so my layout is a box layout and we'll see that in the python file in a second so it has a horizontal orientation my widget is on the left on the right is a box layout which is vertical uh, and inside that there are two buttons uh, and they're just automatically sized so they will fill the entirety of the box layout um, top and bottom I have one that says generate random and at the moment we're just printing when we uh, printing the terminal when we press the button and then I have another button called start generator and on press it prints make a glider generator so these are what the buttons will do eventually at the moment they don't do very much um, okay have a look at the Python file uh, I have kept all the imports in here so just ignore the ones that we don't need just yet. Right, so Conway's has to run on a grid of some kind. So I've made a 40 by 40 grid. It's uh, not a very exciting canvas for Conway's. It, it's much more interesting if you can do a really large grid, but uh, this is just an exercise to get canvas objects updating on the screen in Kivi. So is a 40 by 40 grid uh, and then I make a list well a list of lists that all have zero in them to start with and this is going to be where I store the um, living or dead uh, status of each cell in the 40 by 40 grid uh, this is probably not the most optimized um, implementation of Conway's but again that wasn't the point of this exercise it was to show how to push it to a kiwi screen and this was a fairly straightforward way to do it okay so then I have um, my layout which is a box layout and as we saw in kiwi that's the whole that's the main widget that every other widget is inside and at the moment it doesn't do anything it just is so I've passed through all the functions um, and then I have the my widget class uh, which is what's referenced here uh, I don't actually know if I could have left the ID off that and just left it blank I think Python would error out but it seemed to make sense so that's why I've got that one line there um, but all of the all of what goes inside my widget is built in the Python here. So we have um, one function method update canvas, and I've set these as global, probably 
there are better ways to do that but at the moment this worked and was easy to read um, so there's a global grid which is our list from up here and a global size then we have the cell height which is the height of the canvas uh, inches to divide by size the height of the canvas is defined here in the KV file um, okay so because it's a square I just used height and width is the same as cell height if at some point in the future I wanted to make it um, ovals instead of circles then I could change this here but at the moment circles are working just fine um, I have a start position at zero and I have an XY which both start at zero so uh, that makes it start from the corner and move outwards okay then I clear the canvas so every widget in Kivi has a canvas associated with it uh, and canvas is where you have what you need to draw things to the screen they're not real objects but okay they're objects in the non-programming sense of objects they're things that you can draw and you can draw ellipses and you can draw rectangles and you can have a look at the, all of the different attributes you can send through so you can have them filled or you can have them outlined um, uh, it's it's built from the high game engine I'm pretty sure so uh, you can do just about everything you can do in Pygame. okay so I then loop through all of the rows in the grid um, and all of the columns uh, and I then do I just set a color it's just gray uh, and then I draw a circle. Now the circle has a position and a size. The size is, it's a, a regular circle, a regular ellipse, a circle. So it, the width is the same as the height and the x, y value are driven from here. So the first one is zero, zero. And then I'm going to add cell width to the x value so that I move across the screen and then after I have done that and got to the end of that row I'm going to add to the cell height so that the next row gets drawn from the beginning of the row and I set sorry uh, so that it starts the next row and then x equals start will take it back to the beginning of the row so I don't have just a million circles going off the screen uh, this is what that does uh, so all this does is draw the circles there's this huge grid of circles and you'll see that in a second uh, then I have the main app class which is built it has self.ml this this is something I've discovered as a good way of um, referencing because oops Um, if you make it uh, if you make it an object that's owned by the app then I can do this which I really needed to be able to do to call update canvas which is in the the my widget class not in the my layout class so this allows me to um, reference across the hierarchy of objects so self is the app ml is here my layout my widget is actually freakishly defined in the kv file there so it is my widget as owned by my layout and then update canvas is the method that's in the widget there so it just means it's going to do it once and then it returns my layout as the main thing to the screen and this is how it runs okay so let's have a look at that because it doesn't do anything yet but it does appear on the screen okay 
So here's my 40 by 40 grid of circles, ellipses. Um, and here's my generate random button. If I do that, you'll see it prints do randomness. And if I click on that, it prints make a glider generator. We're going to do all of that in a minute. Okay, so that's all the code I need to make that gray stuff appear. Okay, moving on from there, we get to the actual functionality of the game. It's a, it's a zero player game. So there's a whole lot of rules. They get applied. They get applied every tick of the clock. Um, we're going to set a clock tick that will run the rules and then update the screen. And this update canvas is going to work. I'm just going to make some changes, but it's going to just run every time the clock ticks. And you can set the clock to tick as quickly as you like. I actually came across some difficulties with the clock tick in that there's a point at which the clock is ticking too fast for the update to happen. It's not a very efficient algorithm what I've done. And so um, it was, it, there is a limit to how fast you can run this because of the time it takes to redraw everything on the screen each time. But let's have a look at the next stage. Okay, so here's stage two, and I've made some changes. Here, I've stuck a function in there, random generator function, and mm, I think that's about all I did. Right, I know one more thing uh, down here. I added this in, I should label that. Okay, so what stage two does is we're going to actually push a whole lot of um, living cells to the screen. So uh, a living cell is defined as, um, in, if you look up the game, there are living cells and there are non-living cells. And the rules are that if there's too many living cells surrounding a living cell it dies if there's too few living cells around a living cell it dies if there's a precise number of living cells around a dead cell it comes alive and that's about it um, so i've just made a way to make those living cells and then down here um, I have made a change of color so that if the cell in that position in the grid is living or one, then the circle will be green and otherwise the circle will be gray as it was earlier. And here, all this random generate function does is it reads in the grid and the size and then uh, it makes it makes a grid randomly places things into it and then updates the canvas I mean that's basically what happens it wipes what's in the grid currently just makes it zero this is a list comprehension I hope that's clear um, that does exactly the same as this bit here um, just really fast in <laughs> not very much typing. So uh, we, we wipe the grid and then we make the grid uh, uh, make there be approximately 120 because I haven't actually done any clever testing of um, whether a cell is already living when I make it living. So this could technically come up with multiple cop there could be multiple cells sorry the same cell could be made living multiple times which means there could be fewer than 120 living cells at the end so don't count them 
but it's approximately 120 and it kind of works as a number to use as a, as a seed for the game of life. Okay, and then it runs the update canvas. So that's all that it does. It's going to set some of them green. Now it doesn't do it just yet because I have to change the KV file. So instead of print do randomness, we're going to, whoops, we're going to call that function, which is random gen. And then I'll run that. Okay, I haven't generated any random living cells yet. When I do, there they are. And because I've made it so that it wipes the canvas, wipes the grid back to zeros before it does another random, uh, if I press it again, it'll be a different set of green. And if I press it again, it'll be a different set of green. Um, this doesn't play the game yet. All I've done is made some random green circles. Now we move on to the game. So stage three is actually doing some of the things on the clock tick. So I need a clock tick. I need to have a look at each cell in the grid and count how many neighbors it has, how many living neighbors it has, and then follow the rules. So we're going to determine if a cell is living or dead based on the rules. We're going to update the screen every time the clock ticks and we're going to um, have to do that counting in there somewhere. Uh, so I'll just put all of that in and I'll talk you through it. Okay, it's just about finished um, because the game has been built. Uh, the only thing I haven't done yet is put the generator in, which I'll do in a second. It's just a bit of fun anyway. Once the rules are set up, it will work. Okay, so what did I do? Stage three, I added this global variable. Again, probably didn't need to be global, but works as a global. Um, and all this does is these are the, the things you have to add or subtract sorry, add to the XY value to find all of the, the cells around a particular cell. So if the cell we're looking at is XY, then if you take one away from X and one away from Y, you're looking top left. Uh, if you take one away from X and zero away from Y, then you're looking straight left. And this is the way you go around all of the eight. Um, you just you kind of work out that that's the way to do things sometimes. Um, this has worked really well for me in the past. I could also use a list comprehension here, but uh, let's um, just leave it as it is. Okay. What else did I add? Not very much. I'm down in the main app. Okay. So what I had to add was this clock tick that I was talking about earlier. So this schedules uh, the function self.tick to run every 0.2 of a second. Um, and this is what's going to be our, um, this, this is the gameplay. So the user doesn't interact with this game while it plays and it either forms a stable formation on the screen where no more changes are made or it wipes entirely and well I suppose that's a stable formation as well so it will at some point stabilize so that no more changes are made but the tick will just go forever um, and it will keep updating the screen even though no more changes are made and possibly that's not a good thing but let's go with it anyway okay so we have a couple of functions here. I'm going to trace them from tick because that's the thing that's actually being called every 0.2 of a second. So we have uh, two things that get passed in to tick. They are self, which is the thing that's calling it, and dt, which is the dif differential of time since the last time the tick was called. So. You can do some tracing here using DT to work out if there's a delay somewhere. Uh, it's 
this is not a mission critical program, so we don't need to deal with it. Um, but it's it's there. I could have used args. Okay, so I call in the grid, which is lo gro um, global, to make it able to be accessed from the tick function. And then this is a little bit tricky to understand. Uh, you need to make a copy of that grid so that you make changes in the new grid, not the old grid, so that the the changes that you make don't influence the future living or death status of the cells. So if I updated the first row at the top with a whole lot of living cells based on the surrounds, then those living cells would then interrupt what happened in row two. Now, that's just a little bit of logic you have to get your head around because the rules of Conway's are that everything happens at the same time. You don't have it roll from top left to bottom right and interact with each other. So for it to happen all at the same time, in inverted commas, because it doesn't, you make the changes in a new copy of the grid and then you push the new copy of the grid onto the old copy of the grid to get rid of it and then you update the screen. So it looks like everything happened at once even though it didn't. The problem with Python is that it doesn't do nice copies of grids, of lists. It makes, um, it Use, it does a pointer. So if I just said grid copy equals grid and then tried to update grid copy, it also updates grid because there's a pointer. So what I have to do is I have to actually duplicate the grid. Well, there's a couple of ways to do it. This is one way to do it. It worked. It was a list comprehension. It was not very much typing. I didn't have to import copy. Um, so you can do it a number of ways. You could actually use two for loops if that makes it more clear to you, but you have to copy the grid properly. So this is making a copy of grid. This bit here loops through the grid um, and I keep account of which row I'm in. And then I keep account of which column I need. And then I loop through the columns in the row and then I check to see if the original grid in that position was living by using this function. So let's go to that function. So it reads in the grid, it sets the number to be get neighbors. So let's go and have a look at get neighbors, which is here. And that reads in the grid as a global, and this counts zero. And then that references the thing I made in the globals up here, this here. Uh, you can use a global if you're not going to change it. So for n in neighbors, so for each neighbor, I have a neighbor row and a neighbor column and I check that it's actually within the grid size and then I add to the count. So if that grid item is one, it will add one to the count and if that grid item is zero, it will add zero to the count and then it returns the count. So this is just counting how many living cells are in the surrounding eight cells. From the one that I'm looking at. So that's what get, get neighbors does. It counts the neighbors. So down here, the is alive function counts the neighbors, and then it says if it's currently alive and the count of the neighbors is two or three, then it is alive. Otherwise, if the if it's currently dead and the count of its neighbors is exactly three, because that's how Conway's does, works, then it's also alive. All other cases, it's dead. And so it will return true or false there. So then in tick, 
once it's determined whether it's it's living or dead it updates grid copy to say that that's alive and uh, it, a one if it's alive or zero if it's dead I could have done an integer conversion of the true false I could have stored only true false in my grid there are lots of different ways to do things um, I thought this is the most readable at the time um, and that's another reason why I didn't use a numerate as well <clears throat> okay finally it does that full copy of grid copy back into grid so grid now holds all of the currently living cells as ones and all of the currently dead cells as as zeros and then it updates the canvas and then it just does that over and over again it runs this tick function every 0.2 of a second that checks how many neighbors there are that checks um, that makes the assessment about whether it's living or dead and then copies the grid back over the top of the old grid update canvas so let's have a look at what that does Okay, so it doesn't do anything when all of the cells are dead. So it's not going. It's it's updating the screen currently every 2.2 of a second, but it's not going to it's not going to change the screen because the grid isn't going to change because everything's a zero. It only starts to do interesting things once we add those the seed living cells to the game. So. There we go. And this is what makes Conway's interesting, that these very, very simple rules make some really interesting patterns. This is a, a called an oscillator. It's um, because of the rules, it always goes from vertical to horizontal. Two of them die, two of them come into existence, and then it just keeps going forever. And sometimes you get pretty things or multiple oscillators and sometimes you get gliders that move off the screen. Go. Uh, so these shapes are never going to change and these shapes oscillate. Okay. Now we're going to do the last thing, which is to start the, the glider generator. Okay, and this is the final change I'm making, and it's just a bit of fun. Um, this function here, generator, uh, reads in the grid, and then I wipe the grid, and then make these cells living. Uh, and this wasn't arbitrary. There are a whole lot of really interesting things you can do in Conway's that people have discovered so you can have a look online and find some different ones that you could hard code. Now I just hard coded this because it's called a glider generator. It's a particular shape in Conway's which makes new shapes that just walk off the screen infinitely. Uh, so I just thought it was interesting to put something like that in it. It's not random. It, you know what it's going to do. Um, and in the KV file, I just had to update this one line so that when we press that second button, it's going to run this function. Uh, and let's have a look at that. As I said, it's not going to do anything until I press the button. Okay, so those shapes, uh, sorry, those dots down he uh, here are the ones that I hard coded here to be living. And what happens is they interact in such a way that they make these little gliders, and the gliders just walk off the screen infinitely. Um, there's a little bit 
part of glitch where I've really not uh, controlled the edges very well um, and the gliders become stable and then kill each other when they really shouldn't they should keep walking off the screen and just because the screen doesn't continue it at the moment it doesn't do the right thing but it's pretty close and it gives you a chance to see how to update widgets on the screen which is exactly what the purpose of this exercise was so that's a very basic game of conways in kiwi